What's up, sup everyone? Welcome back to another video. And with the video I released yesterday talking about how CN players, well, top meta CN players like to play their abyss cycles, a lot of people have come up with the questions like, well, Walrus, can you explain a little bit as to the reasonings why some characters are just lower than others when it comes to their versatility? It also seems like they're not too bad. A great character that we always have to point to is Sucrose. Why 2.3%? How does someone like Venti even have a higher usage rate than Sucrose, who technically rivals Kazuha, which not my word, other people's words, right? They're saying that Kazuha at times are, isn't even as good as Sucrose. So how in the blazing hell does Sucrose end up as 2.3 usage rate across 120,000 different players' data points? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Characters such as Yunjin, characters such as Beidou, right? Rosaria, Goro, arguably, is even, like, good-ish. Some people still, in the West at least, relies a lot on Kole because they skip the majority of the Dendro characters characters and they're just really using Kole plus Dendro MC to kind of keep the fort down uh, in terms of Dendro stuff. I'm going to go over some of these statistics as well as give you a little bit more insight on the minds of CN players. It's very different from the West, but not different to the point that you cannot understand them if I were to explain that to you, okay? We'll predominantly be focusing on the B tier and C tier. As uh, in the previous video, I already showed you guys who is sitting all the way at the top and I'm sure you guys are well aware. Now, as we get to the lower bits of the C tier, you'll start to see some of the least used characters borderline neglected. Not surprised to see Zhen Yan here, not surprised to see characters like Amber, characters like Dory, right? Uh, characters even such as Candice. But a character like Hazel feels weird to see all the way down here. So is a character like Ningguang, Noel as well. And uh, there are people who would be surprised to even see D look this low, right? When Kaching herself has a pretty decent usage rate at 5.1 when it used to be flipped on its head. But since the arrival of Dendro, Kaching has seen a lot more practical uses. So now let's talk about this. If you guys have not seen this kind of stuff, I'm pretty much doing this every single abyss cycle from now on. And if you want to get this kind of data, make sure to subscribe. And if you haven't seen the video from yesterday, check that out first. Okay, so let's talk about this. First and foremost, you have to look at this data analytics uh, with kind of like a tinted lens, right? What is this data? about is it about the casual players is it about newer players no this is database that requires you to send in your data so think about it like this a person who is playing this game on their free time plays the new abyss cycle pretty much the day it comes out and then is willing to send in their data right with proof and all that stuff so people can tally this stuff what kind of players are they all right first we got to answer this question because who who is this data from right it's the meta players a hundred thousand plus meta players from the cn server so what should this tell you these people are more focused on efficiency over anything else they want to get fast clears clearing efficiently is very important to them so they're naturally going to gravitate towards characters and general meta team comps that helps them achieve that goal and this is why i think it's very helpful sharing this data with you guys so when you guys have questions asking well why is uh, let's say Guang so low why is mika so low why is candice so low direct answer 90 percent of the time is there's either better options or they're just bad synergistically characters that fall this low in terms of meta and usage rate don't necessarily have issues with the current abyss it's not like oh it's just this abyss it's just this one cycle they're gonna go back up eventually those are some of the characters that hovers around a and b tier so the thing with these meta players is characters can actually fluctuate between a and b a and s very rarely do they jump from b to s or a to s plus extremely rare as you guys can see the the data range here it is pretty difficult for characters to make like a 30 percent uh rate change right it's just not practical there has to be some sort of huge incentive and you'll see that there are characters that are currently not on rerun that are still hovering around eight years so what does this mean it just means that consistently these characters are good characters if you are lost on who to invest into next let's say you have a bunch of the s plus tiers you have a ton of the s tiers you're thinking of picking up a new character or a new team it's in your best interest to pick someone from the a tier because these characters consistently are performing extremely well so back to our point with the lower tier characters right a 
good example is when we take a look at the lower B tier characters as we move into the C tier characters, you'll start to see these units who are like hovering between the ethereal plane of life and death, really. Like they're borderline about to be forgotten. And uh, let's start with Venti. I know we always meme on him, but this is a big, big thing with Venti. And I think with him, we can kind of clear up this understanding. Okay, so what's the deal with Venti? Why 6.5%? Why is he not higher? So you see, the problem with Venti is actually different than, let's say, someone like Razor. Different, different issue, completely different, right? Here's the thing with Venti. The reason Venti is so low, because his role is currently occupied by somebody else. It's Kazuha. The existence of Kazuha makes it so that there's very rare scenarios where you would look to the second best option. Right? The second best option in many cases would be sucrose, people would say. But look at sucrose, 2.3%. So this is the thing, right? When I tell you guys, the players that contribute this data are always looking for the most efficient way to get the job done. It's not that sucrose is bad. It's not that venti is bad. Well, that's debatable. But it's not that these characters are bad per se. It's just that there's a far, 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 far better alternative. Kazuha. But it's not the case for everybody. I mentioned Razor. So a character such as Razor, he's like a physical electro hybrid DPS who's a four star, right? So if you look like, oh, who's the who's the superior version of oh, Eula? Eula is a superior like physical, right? But she's cryo, so she's the other half of super conduct. And, and then okay, Eula, let's take a look at Eula. Oh. They're like in the same tier. So you see, it's not always that, well, there's a better unit to use. So that's why that unit is preoccupying the meta space while this one is sitting down here. No, some play styles just aren't favored. They're just flat out. I don't want to say it, but it's it's bad. It's bad. What do you want me to say? It's, it's a bad play style. Now, if you want to play it, don't let these charts stop you. Does this mean people can't beat it? 4% still did it. 4% out of 120,000 people still use Eula and most likely still cleared in 36 star the abyss. Don't let that deter you. This is the beautiful thing about Genshin Impact. I'm pretty sure there are people out there 36 starring the abyss consistently with Klee. C0, free to play. Who knows? Maybe they spend 10 hours every single abyss cycle just rerunning. I don't know. All I can show you is when it comes to general consensus, right? What this data shows is generalized consensus. There are characters that are far more favored and venti has been falling slowly and slowly and slowly whenever he does get a rerun he can shoot up to upper b sometimes even a tier right but during his prime he was consistently above 90 percent i don't know how much more i can emphasize this is that a character such as venti have really high highs really low lows it's just that currently right now hoiverse has not benefited him in terms of the abyss but don't get it mixed up people a character like gene will never shoot up to 70 something percent even if the abyss says like double your entire team's damage if you have gene well i don't know about that but i think there are certain synergies in the game that has far superior damage scaling than just doubling your damage okay so understand that just because a character is underutilized doesn't mean always that there are better options or it's just not in the meta for now some characters are never in the meta so as, as as we move on back into the the bottom feeders here aloy right aloy is a great example a lack of constellations and a very poorly designed kit in my honest opinion i think there's a lot of things they could have done to make her a more and better on hit user i, I don't know maybe make it less of a headache to build up her stacks so you can activate her elemental skill the on hit effect but without constellations and pretty much Hoyoverse has just ignored this character so how can you say a character like Aloy will ever have more usage than like say a character like Ayaka or even be competitive in that space but then you have a character like Kaya who is I mean she, he's doubled her usage rate but at the same time nothing to write home about a lot of people seem to get really upset when looking at this data saying oh but noel is so op i've been 36 starring with noel every single time but are you saying that noel is op or she's a good character or are you saying that she's the best character in her role right you, we have to understand this like i said when you look at numbers like this you might think oh noel is lumped together with someone like aloy does that mean she's just crap no it's because there's a character above noel that gets the job done better right so 
you guys have to be able to clearly identify which of these characters suffers from those traits. For example, if you think Noel and Aloy are in C tier for the same reason, you would be sorely mistaken. And then you let's say, oh, but you know, Aloy is the, the five star. So maybe if I have Aloy sitting around, maybe I should build Aloy first. But technically, you'll actually get a far better result if you build Noel over Aloy. Now let's talk about the other problem. The really big problem with a lot of these characters who are consistently at the bottom is just that they have very terrible synergies. Synergies in the game that either are underdeveloped, completely ignored, or just doesn't exist, right? Pe like theory crafters or some people who are in the depth of the dungeon trying to figure out some weird niche ways to play. Like for example, when uh, Shinho first came out, people played her with Chi Chi and called Chi Chi like the cryo queen and Chi Chi was like, oh my god, dealing so much damage. But you see, those are just copium entertainment content. So like, if you want to say, oh, I can make my Chi Chi a cryo DPS and suddenly she'll shoot up and be competitive with Ayaka. Right, of course you can't, right? Because your, your venti never leaves your team in Abyss or something like that. Just because you enjoy certain playstyles doesn't mean that it makes them valid. Just because you have been successful with certain playstyles doesn't mean that everybody else is going to have the resources and the patience to build up these teams to make it work. Just because it works for you doesn't mean it's a universal thing. And a lot of the times I feel like people watching this, they can't understand or they can't grasp the idea that uh, the path of least resistance is going to be the path most people will choose. It provides less headache, it has better longevity, it's proven to be consistent, and if you have any questions or concerns, there's plenty of guides online of people using these teams to help you out. So the resources generally poured into these other more meta team comps are just going to be far more plentiful and beneficial for players who are more casual or who are just here to claim their monthly abyss rewards to follow those and these characters down here almost nobody plays them you'll find the oddball like okay here's a good benchmark to know if a character is niche if you can build an entire youtube career out of just playing this character that character is too niche okay that's the benchmark going for like if you can build an entire channel around just playing this character or you can have viewership or people who care about you using this character to clear the abyss 36 star or whatever then that character is far too niche to be promoting to the general masses okay i think that should be a good benchmark for example amber jin yan these are some of the really popular ones that people have entire youtube channels of hundreds of thousands of subscribers dedicated just watching you use amber to clear the game I don't know why there's not a Noel one, there's not a Kai one. Maybe they're already too like popularized, right? But there are people who are Sims for these characters who all happen to have YouTube channels, right? And they have huge followings. However, there's only one truly bottom feeder. Now, the question is really up for debate nowadays, whether it's Amber or Jin Yan, but these two characters are still consistently seen as like just the meme. I think they're actually better than people make them sound to be, but at the same time, people have already universally recognized these two characters as like the bottom feeders but right now the true bottom feeder should be Razor and Hazel now just because you see 0.1 across the board doesn't all mean they're they're the same truly the worst character that you should make a YouTube channel about right now is Hazel and trust me I don't think many people would even be able to guess that Hazel is truly the bottom feeder considering how big of a hype uh, he had when he first came out and how excited people were to freaking the like, you know what I mean so sure, nowadays he truly is just non-existent I, I know there's gonna be a guy comedy like the oh, wars I've used Hazel to 36 again you are the minority right sure take pride in the fact that you're using and clearing the game with one of the least used characters in terms of general CN meta, but it's very difficult to promote these characters to others, right? That's all I wanted to say and hope you guys understand better why some of these characters are sitting where they are. You gotta separate these tier lists from associating these characters being bad. Yes, some of these characters are bad, but other times it's just there's better options. So if those options didn't exist, there are characters that are down here that would be far, 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 far better up there, right? Sucrose is a great example. I would say Rosaria is even a decent example. Beto probably will be much higher if some other Electro Applicators didn't exist and also had better synergies with their Burst and other units. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Hoover's kind of gutted her on purpose to sell some other characters. If like, like, it doesn't even have to be in the same category. If some, there aren't better DPS options, uh, maybe someone like Ito would be far higher, right? If I hate them didn't exist, I think someone like Tainari would be a slightly higher. So just understand that once you understand how these characters are connected to each other and how they affect each other's performance, things starts opening up and becoming far clearer.
thank you guys so much for watching and i hope this has been a little bit more helpful on understanding the placements of these characters and yeah we can talk a little bit more about this during the live stream but until then we're just to stay safe peace peace bye